Hey guys, welcome back to the Bobcat Broadcast. My name is Daxon Jumble, your host, and this is your weekly news. But before we get started, this is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and put your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Hi, welcome back to the Bobcat broadcast with our teacher interview. Today we have Kim Battistessa with us, our fifth grade teacher. I'll, we will ask her a few questions today. So Kim, why did you decide to come to OVO? I came to OVO because I had moved from the Bay Area where I just had my second child and we wanted to move closer to family. So we moved back to Sacramento area and a friend of mine actually had a daughter in fifth grade at Orangeville Open at the time. And the teacher was retiring in the middle of the school year. Oh. So they needed a fifth grade teacher. Mm -hmm. So they had asked me to consider being the teacher and I interviewed for it and I got the job. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I know, right? What is your favorite book to read? Oh, my favorite book to read is Running Out of Time by Margaret Peterson Haddix. And it's one of my favorite books because it is a little mystery, a little solving problems, mm -hmm. and it's kind of set way back when. It's a great story. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we start the year with it and the kids really enjoy it. Yeah. What is your favorite food? Ah, uh, that's a hard one. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to say probably Italian food. But truth be told, I do like tacos. Mm -hmm. I like sushi. Hmm. Yeah, probably Italian though because my husband makes really good Italian food. Mm, Italian food is good. It what is. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie. My favorite movie for myself is The American President. It's really old, but I really love it. Um, my favorite kid movie is probably Monsters, Inc. Yeah. I love Solway. Yep. Yeah. What is your favorite thing about OVO? Oh, there's so many good things about OVO. Yes, I mean, obviously the kids are amazing. Um, the parents are amazing. Mm -hmm. The staff is like the best. Um, I think my favorite thing is that I get to teach really great kids mm -hmm. and be a part of a community that is loving and kind. Um, and then I also get to work with really great people who yeah. have become my family and my friends. Yeah. When and why did you start teaching? Uh, I started teaching <laughs> way back when, Quincy, uh, in 1998 was my first official year. I was a fourth grade, fifth grade combination mm -hmm. teacher. And I started teaching because I have always loved teaching. Yeah. When I was little, like your, your age, I would play with my friends and we would mm -hmm. set up a whole classroom and we would grade fake papers and yeah. do lots of fun things and play the classroom. I always wanted to be a teacher. Cool. Uh, thank you, and thank you also for watching this week's teacher interview. Thanks. Birthdays for this week are Briella, October 18th, 4th grade, Christina's class. Gwen, October 19th, 3rd grade, Heidi's class. Robbie, October 19th, 8th grade, Lonnie's class. Emma, October 21st, 4th grade, Christina's class. Roland, October 22nd, 4th grade, Annie's class. Logan, October 22nd, 4th grade, Lynn's class. Owen, October 22nd, 1st grade, Hannah's class. Milana, October 23rd, 1st grade, Christina's class. Abby, October 23rd, 3rd grade, Heidi's class. Maddie, October 23rd, 5th grade, Kim's class. Please come to the student store to pick up your free pencil. My name is Sophia McKenzie. I'm in 8th grade and I'm a commissioner of service. Hi, I'm Ashley Warner and I'm part of the Service Committee and Student Council. And today we're joined by Christine. So Christine, what is your job? Well, actually I work with the San Juan School District. I work with the deaf and hard of hearing as well as special daycare for kids with autism. And I volunteer with Fluff Buddies, which is something I, I basically just do on the side. What interests you in becoming a pet rescuer? Well, I've always had a natural affinity for animals anyway. I mean, I can't see an animal without going, oh, look at that. Anyway, um, what really brought me to Fluff Buddies, though, was the fact that I 
was involved with some students that needed some assistance getting community service. And they really didn't know or how to get any. And it's really limited if you're under 16 for a lot of these, you know, students that are especially an avid to try to have this happen. So I approached Fluff Buddies and I always wanted to be a part of them anyway and set up a time for me to basically on my watch have these students come in and socialize the cats, clean the cages and talk with the, the potential um, adopters just to make, see if, you know, they can kind of get the characteristics out of each of the kitties. So it was really, it started with me wanting to help them, but I really wanted to do it all along. So what are the best parts of, of your job? Oh, the best part is when, you know, you rescue a kitty and it goes to a great home. That's, that's the best. And the kitties really appreciate it because, you know, they really are pretty helpless and they need people to behave. And sometimes people just aren't. But it takes all of us, basically, I guess you could say a village to, to come together. And when you see all these loving hearts come together trying to help one cause, that's the best. That truly is the best. What is the hardest part about being a pet rescuer? Oh, it is absolutely devastating when you put your heart and soul into these little creatures and they don't make it. I mean, there's nothing worse than losing something that you really, really want to do well and it doesn't. So how do you get into this type of work? Well, a lot of it, um, like I said, I just started knocking on doors, so to speak, and I didn't really even go online or anything. I just knew where they were, and I used to visit them all the time anyway, because they're located um, in Petco. So I would go all the time just to see and, and socialize, and I was already kind of doing it, but without being official. So, um, you know, a lot of times you could just look it up, but also with a lot of these shelters, they need volunteers so, so bad, especially uh, the Bradshaw shelter. They need people just to walk the dogs, something as simple as that. And they will let anybody 12 and up be a volunteer. So it's a matter of just applying yourself, a lot of it. Wow. Okay, so what's your favorite type of animal that you've rescued? Mm, well, I love them all, but <laughs> I have to show you the one it is my favorite it's alia hi hey, alia she is a ragdoll siamese which is also my favorite breed um she's about almost 17 pounds she's pretty big you can see how big she is <laughs> <laughs> but this has been my favorite so far of all the animals, she's my favorite for sure. And she's also, she's very affectionate. She likes to ride around on my shoulders. She's a little heavy to do that now with. Yes, I love you too. My Dalmatian wants some attention. Yes, yes, we love you too, girly girl. <laughs> no, she got a little jealous. <laughs> well, what kind of training do you need to be a pet rescuer? Um, you know, you, you can just go in with a big heart. That's really where it starts. And if you're willing to learn, there's a lot of people who are willing to show you the ropes, but you, you have to just be, pay attention, listen, and understand why they do things the way they do. Otherwise, I mean, there's no real training involved. It's kind of as you go. And you know, situations change by the minute a lot of times. I mean, especially, uh, I remember a time when one of the cats was so scared it got out so everybody's going crazy trying to find the kitty but i actually was the one that got close enough to, to grab the kitty and they said oh the kitty's too scared and it was going crazy just scratching like mad i said yeah just just let let it go because the best thing to do is just wait till it's calm and it's it's ready to to actually just crawl into the cage so we could get him but i was really surprised of you know some of the different circumstances we would have and we, oh, it's just amazing that we learn every day something else. So it, there is no real, you know, book on telling you what you need to know before you walk in the door. Not really. 
I mean, you can have some ideas, but you definitely learn something every time you encounter a new little creature. Yeah. Is there anything you would like to tell us that we have not asked? Um, yeah. A lot of things I would really wish I knew, especially when I was younger in elementary school, is I really wish that it, I knew more of the opportunities that were available to me because I didn't know there was any, if there was around me at all. I really didn't get a lot of opportunities to, to spread out my wings and look. And I really wanted to make a difference in the world. And so I find myself after high school doing that. Um, and my big push too is, you know, if you find your, find your passion, discover really what interests you. And when you do, you're going to be successful, whatever it is. And if you love what you do, you'll always be happy. So it's really a big push that I like to say. It's like, take your time, find what it is. Don't jump into something because it's money. Do it because you love it. So, so that's my big uh, Thank you so much for joining us today, Christine, to share experiences and talk about your job. Yeah, you bet. Ladies, take care. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Now it's time for Class Spotlight. Two weeks ago at OVO, there was a cross country meet. A lot of people showed up and beat the personal record. We even had a few people placed in top three. Jacob and Angie, both members of the cross country team, I'm gonna be asking them some questions. So Jacob, if the season were to start over, what would you change? Um, I probably earlier would have started running more to get used to this track and just so I could get better at it. Yeah. And Angie, um, do you feel like you improved from where you started? I definitely do. My form and just my running skills have improved. Alright, that's all. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need to interview this you after. This is awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna be interviewing Minhu. He's on the cross country team, so I'm gonna be asking him a question. Um, so, do you feel like you improved from where you started? Uh, yes, a lot. Because last year I was really bad at running, and this year I'm just only a tiny bit bad at running. All right. So. And um, what do you enjoy about cross country? It's really fun and. I have a lot of friends here, so it's really fun to hang out with them too. A lot of people had fun and finished strong. That's every class spotlight. This week's weather forecast is average high of 75 and average low of 53. I recommend wearing a jacket or a sweatshirt to stay comfortable and warm. This is the weekly weather forecast. Jackson. Hello, Robbie. What did the skeleton say after eating its dinner? I don't know. What? Bon appetit. <laughs> You're meant to fall and then it makes a funny sound effect. <laughs> On the in history, October 18, 1931, Thomas Edison passed away. It's also National Chocolate Cupcake Day. Stay safe, Bobcats! <laughs>